Okay, Dick, before we start the Delling Pole podcast, mm-hmm. which is not going to be called the Delling Pole podcast anymore, for reasons I shall explain. Right. Um, we need a cup of tea. Right. But we can't have the cup of tea until we open this surprise present from our friends at Twist Tea. Right, well, uh, read out what it says. Dear Dick, we hope you enjoy playing the yes-no game with tea. Best wishes, Twist. Well, there's no Is this pressure. the tea you've been going I, on about? I, 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 look, one of the things I love about our special friends, well, you know, uh, sort of plural, sort of singular, is that the way that the, the, the really special ones mm-hmm. give us gifts. They and are always the best kind of friends. I like gifts. I just think, call me old-fashioned, but I think that the way to a man's heart is to give him loads of good shit. So, is this... What, what type is that? The tasting menu. So, uh, presumably, there's... Oh, there's you've got the... Different... You've got... No, you've oh, got... Oh, oh those are lovely. Look at these. Those are lovely. Okay, well... Um, but... Get I'm, it on. No, no, no. Because I'm going to... That, that's no, good packaging. Uh, we, like need, that. we need... We uh, need... That's, that's for you for later. Right, okay. I think we need some normal tea. I think they've sent me... Because they've, they've sent me this fantastic bumper goodie bag. Okay. And so they deserve all the, the massive promo you are going to get. a here. designer, I do appreciate that. That is lovely. That yeah. is gorgeous packaging. It is. And they're really nice people too. Obviously they are because they love, love the podcast. Um, I'm going to get some other, ooh, other freebies ooh. we've been given. Banana shake... This might prevent Lydia from throwing a complete also, wobbly when podcast, she gets home. Also, podcast, podcast, um, special friends. This is this is what the kind of behaviour we expect from our special friends. Well, it this, certainly sets the tone. You can open this. Unfortunately, I've, I've checked. Can my I name. open this one that I found here? You, um, you weren't meant to open that one. Come on, well, how bad can it be? Just wanna. Oh. That's your special Christmas present, and it's... We can cut that out later, can't we? We can. Is it what I think it is? Um, it isn't, actually. It's, it's, it's called Sister's Tea, and it's good for stopping you get it, getting a cold. But, but, actually, in Lenny. the future, can I say it again? Special friends. If you want to send us your really high-grade um, marijuana <laughs> through the post... Let me... Um, we really don't object at all right. because it's such a bore having to go onto the, having to buy Bitcoin, yeah. go onto the dark web. Right. Um, normally, the site you go to is being closed down. And this you, sounds you, like you, the sort of impassioned plea that's guaranteed to get us sponsors from a major organisation. The the marijuana industry is awash with cash at the moment. Right, okay. and, and has been, I've, I've been Isn't watching... it largely liberal though? In, um, in the American sense. Yeah, yeah, but but actually I've been watching Narcos Mexico. Yeah. And I have to say, they weren't particularly liberal, the people that were right. in those fields of sense. They seem to be kind of quite old-fashioned. Okay, old-fashioned so, conservatives. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> some of that Great. will do. Well, okay, well, I'll enjoy this uh, sister's tea. And the other thing, Dick, other thing, look, what else have we been saying? We've only got one. I don't know how we're going to divide it. We're going to have to find an occasion where we are together. Right. Yeah. Check this out. Check this out. This is really good shit. Mm. Is it? Yeah. Ooh. Oh. Read it out. Sh- sh- show the camera. Fishers. We, we've now got London visual. dry gin. We've now got visuals as well as sound. Fishers. Open it up. Look at the bottle. Look at the bottle. Is it? Oh. <gasps> yes. Show. Show. Not the, not the cups. The cups are nice. Well, no, the cups look the nice. Cups are nice. Uh, the cups are nice, yeah. Anyway, that stuff... I had it when I, I, got, I went That's shooting nice. with a, a previous podcast guest, right. William Sitwell, the disgraced William Sitwell, the yes, man who's... of course, who, who became nationally famous. For, no, for being not, rude about but, vegans. I mean, how yeah. can that, how can that be wrong? There. Matter. Isn't it good to have on camera, finally, people can see how vicious and evil your dog is? It's so, lovely. I think you're the only person who sees it that way. No, no, no anyway, to, that stuff, here. vicious gin... Mm. I had some, several glasses of it on the shoot, and it's really good stuff. It's it, it's it's proper posh quality that is. Right. So that's good. We do love gin, and you know what? The time we'll be together is over Christmas, so um, let's do it. Where you do drink gin, <laughs> as much as possible. I've been. To- do you know? I, I I have not been drinking almost for three months. Of your lime cure yeah. thing. And the, the vegan, enforced veganism. We, I think we should talk about that later on in the podcast. But first of all, can we make a cup of tea? So there'll be a cut, 
I'm, I'm breaking the fourth wall here. Yeah. But there's going to be a cut, and the next scene you'll have is, is a cup cups of, tea. of tea. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. So let's go there. Right. Watch out for... <laughs> oh! <laughs> James. <laughs> I'm so glad that people can finally see the evil of your, of your hound. They're not going to see it that way. They're going to see it as a horrible man who sat on a lovely dog. Yeah. It's, look. Oh, look, people will be able to see his ace, ace of spades. spades. Oh, sp- there you go. You stay with Daddy. That's nice. So, Dick, mm. welcome to the not Dellingpole podcast. Okay, well, you genuinely haven't yet explained to me why it's no longer the Dellingpole podcast. I, I don't know. Um, it, but Breitbart have decided they no longer want the podcast, right? Which is well, I, I, you know, I ask not to reason why. No. So, so either it means the podcast dies, mm-hmm. or it means that the special friends mm-hmm. gather together and make it possible for us to carry on doing the podcast, um, you know, through the, the crowdfunding method. Right. And people have said to me. Some of my crowdfunders already said we don't want to do it through Patreon because... Well, well it's pretty much out anyway, isn't it? Well, they're, no, they're gradually... apparently Patreon um, did over Sargon of Akkad. Mm-hmm. And, and people don't want to be associated with, 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 with this liberal conspiracy to, con- to destroy conservative voices. Mm-hmm. So, by the way, do you see the, the magic of editing? The, the, this this the, great what is it we're drinking? This, Rudolph Brud- tea. Rudolph Rudolph Rudolph, tea which is half tea, half Christmas cake, which sounds like it should be disgusting, but actually, even with milk, I did insist on having milk in this. It is lovely. I'm I'm feeling much more festive. So th- so thank you to our friends at, at Twist Tea. Yeah. And let me point out that there is room for all manner of sponsorship on this show now. <laughs> Massive product Cause, placement. Because basically, look. Look at this way. We put this stuff out on, on um, uh, what do we put it out? YouTube and mm-hmm. etc. They are going to defund us like there's no tomorrow. Yeah. They, they're just going to absolutely just hammer us because we're evil, aren't we? Well, even, if we're, yeah. even if we say funny things and we, we're not rude about anything. And we're kind to animals. Kind to clearly. animals, yeah. Even if we do that, they're still going to gonna defund us, demonetise us. So basically, it's got to come from the crowdfunding route and from, <coughs> and, from, and from show. I would like the idea of a headline sponsor for each show. I'd like the idea of gin companies, arms manufacturers. I, yep. Because I'll tell you my ambition, Dick. Go on. I think if we get this right, we can take over the world. We can become, we can become the, the shit Adam and, Adam and Joe of podcasting yeah. and do, do okay out of it. The and, problem with oh, Adam so and Joe the, is they didn't really make any money out no, of that. No, they no, they went on to other things to do there. But we're shit Adam no. and Joe. That's our thing. Um, look at Adam Buxton's podcast. No, I'm sure no, he's massive. He's he does quite much of it. And also, we have access to the great right wing, the vast right wing conspiracy. Mm-hmm. And who've got who've got all the guns? The vast right wing conspiracy. I want this time next year. Mm-hmm. I want the podcast, the vidcast, as it might be to be opening underneath the, the Christmas tree a Beretta over and under shotgun. <coughs> You're going to be sent away. When I went, when I, cause when I went shooting, I didn't kill anything. Because I, right. because I, a, because I was shit. But, but no. B, because I haven't got because my own... you didn't have a particular I didn't have gun. a gun. And, and somebody showed me this, this lovely... They only cost 2,000 quid, which I think is, is not a big ask for any right. sponsor, Beretta. Um, and and I, I'd be, you know, in with the country set and... Um, be tooled up, which is quite important, I think, for mm-hmm. a chap. And I think American, the American special friend particularly would support that. They do like their guns. They do like their guns. I, as you know, Boy had so much fun travelling in his gap year mm. through America gap year. With, my, with my American Facebook friends. Mm. And they were all, being my friends, they were all... They all took him out into their backyards and said, do you want to fire some World War II Here's weapons? a Colt 45. Here's a World War Two. Here's a yeah. Garand. 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 Um, what were the other I think ones? Some of them pronounce it Garand. Yeah. But, uh, whatever. Anyway, he shot. He M4. shot more weaponry in three months than I have in a lifetime. Yeah. He shot an AK. He shot you know, all this. So, I'd say, God bless, Trump's America. Yep. So mm. uh, that's the plan. Um, 
you're talking about... <laughs> yes, Lemmy. You're going to steal the bloody show, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Never yes. work with, with dogs, they say. Never I don't work know why with he's stupid at me. I'm evil. Not doing anything. Oh, I know why. Actually, this is his chair. <laughs> he, he's the only one who normally has this one. We're normally sat on the. Yes. Yeah. Can you just. Can I. I, I would say the You're charm. You're going to have to go. You're the gonna charm is going to wear off out. after a while. It, it People really are going to be thinking, yeah, I quite like those dogs, but actually, no, I don't anymore. <laughs> um, talking of stuff on YouTube rather yeah. than the stuff that, that we've been doing just audibly, yeah. In the gym every day, yeah. I'm putting on podcasts, I'm running while watching podcasts, I have them going while I'm working. It's, it's sorry, the stuff, vidcast. On, stuff, vidcast, stuff on YouTube. Even if it's just something, two blokes talking and it's being filmed rather than it's being audio. So there's a whole world of stuff we can do with that. Now, but so who do was you, do you reckon, do? You reckon, Dick, that, that, that vidcasts are the way forward? Because I, 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 I'm not... I'm not down with with, well, the, with the people who do Well, I don't know how you make the money out of them. I don't know how anyone makes them pay. No, well, it's the same, same with, with podcasts. You, you do it through crowdfunding, yeah. obviously. But my question to you is, is it worth it? I mean, am I not going to have to get my teeth done? Am I not going to have to have a hair transplant to make me look sexy enough for this but, kind of shit? Yeah, I think that the thing about not being a... a, a Perfect ten? Well, not, not being a, a snowflake crybaby liberal yeah. is the fact that we don't have to look great because... Real people don't. Right, we're keeping it it's real. The authenticity, we're isn't it? Real, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, um, who have I been watching? I hear you ask. Yeah, who have you been have watching? Have you Dave? heard of Dave Cullen? Um, is he what, is he a pop he, musician? He, no, he's he's a ginger guy. Uh, he, he's on our side, and he does culture war stuff. There's, there's a whole world of stuff out there. You, know, you 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 watch one, and they they link up to others. Is right? he is he bigger than us? Oh, at the moment, I should imagine he's much bigger than us. He's even got a, a sort of a little cartoon avatar. Okay. Yeah. Well, we can get we one of those. Not cartoon. Avatars. By the way, by the way, Dick, sorry. I, this is your special skill. Mm -hmm. I want merchandise. Yeah. I want loads and loads of merchandise because what I'm going to do uh, as part of the fundraising thing, we're going to have a, various tiers of specialness. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the highest tier, I think, is probably going to be friend, mm -hmm. and then below that you get. Special friend, right? Blow that special. So it's special all branded friend. gear, like yeah, yeah, yeah. James's friend, yeah. And w what can it be called, by the way? What the if, po if if Dellingpole podcast is is gone? Oh, not not the Dave, James Dellingpole mm. podcast mm. at all. Well, Either that or the second best podcast in the world, right? Bruce, what I do, so when I go and do um, all the American podcasts, and I go on it, and and and. I say I'm I'm doing the second best podcast in the world. Mm -hmm. They'll think, <laughs> lol. They'll think that their podcast is the best. Right, but it's the second best to what? Well, Your old one. It it's kind of false modesty. Right. Because I know I know this is in fact the best <laughs> podcast in the world. Um, other ones. I mean, we talked briefly about Sargon of Akkad. I've only recently started acting. I mean, obviously I'd heard of him. Actually, watching his stuff. I'm doing a podcast with him. And you know what? What? He comes across as not remotely right wing. He's actually he's not. I know that's his whole thing. He, he he has to tell people till that he's blue in the face. Yeah. But how he is even painted as right wing, I I, I simply can't work. Everyone work it who out. is not <laughs> Occupy or a black block or Ger or, or a Corbyn, <coughs> Corbyn Easter is these days a Nazi. Right. That's, that's, how it, how, that's the world we live in now. And, you know, to the point of defunding him. I mean, that's just... <coughs> right, you are going to go. I think we're going to push you out. We could probably... Do you know what? We could probably budget if we get enough money for, for a, a vet that... that youth, <coughs> uh, euthanise? Is that the friendly uh, euphemism <laughs> no. these days? It's much easier to ask him to leave the room. <laughs> don't have to have him put down. <coughs> Look, I know it's your... <coughs> Jenny. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Dick, but <coughs> he's not doing himself very good PR, is he here? <laughs> Look, he's absolutely lovely. He just wants his tummy tickling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like when I went diving with great white sharks. And all they wanted to do was just, just have their tummy tickles. They wanted to eat me. That's all they wanted to do. Was that, was that really so much to ask? Are you comparing Lemmy to a great white? I, I rather like the great white sharks, actually. 
So no. Lemmy was very affectionate towards you earlier. Yeah, all right. I just think it's a shame that he's letting himself down oh. now we're filming. This is so ruining our, the, uh, the continuity of thought. What were you, what were you talking about? <laughs> I don't know. No. no, exactly. I'm terrified of my own yeah. dog. Yeah, consult your book. <laughs> right. Um, what I've got down is my usual list of interesting topics. Yes. And... Um, <laughs> One of them is the TV that we've been watching. And oh, we yes. had a little Twitter spat. Not a spat, but pe people oh, were suggesting... Ozark. Ozark. Because <coughs> that was going to be the thing. I'll, you're going to go, Lemmy. Right? Yeah. This is it. Yeah. Yeah. No, go. That go. Is... Right? Oh, my God. He's, he's coming near me. What do I do? No, so you, you can't indulge him. You can't no, right, say... If he, if, he, if he goes, he goes. Out, out the room. We go, we go, out the we room. go. Yeah, I wonder go, whether go any any, any listeners can get can get the um, the we go we go we go <laughs> no the, uh, the one who might get the Dougal and the blue cat you, reference. But, but you said it. All oh, right, Dick. All oh, right, I didn't realise it was a whole thing you were setting up. I was. Uh, people like guessing things. <laughs> right, Ozark. Why is it no good? Because I really enjoyed it. I watched the whole of the first series. Okay, and um, yeah, I thought it was it's great. a while since I watched and then rejected Ozark. I, for a start, I get slightly irritated by the, the comedy series that he was on previously. Are you judging that on... on no, <laughs> partly. I, I just think... That's so you, that it is. It was... Um, what, 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 what's it even called? What's the, his previous comedy thing? Yeah, Boy right. keeps making me watch it. And I don't know. Um, it's meant to be the comedy that shows you've got really good taste in comedy. All right. Okay. But that, that, that aside... I think it keeps pulling its punches. Mm -hmm. In the same way, I stopped watching Better Call Saul mm -hmm. because it seemed to me that um, kept pulling its punches. Like, go back to the A Team. The reason I hate the reason A Team is Satan mm -hmm. is because they kept blowing up and nobody died. Mm -hmm. And I know there's ultra violence in Ozark, but it seems to me that everyone's kind of got a heart of gold, really. And what in Ozark? Yeah, they're all thoroughly foul. Well, I hate the family. They're right. all horrible. Oh. I hate the dad. I hate the daughter, the whiny teenage daughter. I, why doesn't she die? Um, the, the whiny wife. No, it's just, it just really annoyed me. Right. So, so okay. I'm well, not taking it. Um, you, did you watch the whole thing? No. Or did, oh, well, that, that's no. a problem, isn't it? I didn't. It, it's got lots and lots of twists and turns. And, and you know, it, it's Game of Thronesy in its changes of directions. Is it? And, and you know, people getting killed who well, you least expect. It may so. be. It may be that I that I just went through. Cause sometimes I do reject things for the most. Oh, I'm a, I'm as bad as you in that yeah. respect. I, I will sometimes give something two episodes before I will. I mean, you know, the wife finds the programs and I I watch and reject them. And um, it, it, you've down to some evenings where you are just trawling Netflix to try and find something to watch. In the same way, um, I. Um, was rude in my last Spectator TV review about a series which actually, in the end, I thought was pretty good. Right. It's the one where this woman with a young child and, and her husband, for no reason, stabs this man to death by a lake when they're out having a picnic one day. Right. And you start out thinking, well, what's the mystery here? She's a woman. It's the kind of stuff <laughs> women do. Um, but but the, with eight more episodes, to, in the, seven more episodes to go, you knew that wasn't. There was more to it than that. Right. It, it was a why done it. You had to work mm -hmm. out why the. And, and the reason I'm sort of waffling here, I can't remember what the bloody thing was called. It was a huge hit in America. It'll 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 come back to me anyway. It, well, people can look up in the Spectator if they want to and and, and find the name. Right. Um, but. But weirdly, when you get finally to the end, the convoluted explanation as to why this thing happened and why she did what, what she did and why she's actually sympathetic after all was kind of worth it. And it was the other thing. It was the other thing that sort of taught that I, where I was torn between liking it and hating it was it was really quite sleazy and porny. Mm -hmm. And when you're sitting down with the wife watching this sleazy porn stuff, mm -hmm. it, unless you kind of want to be put in the mood for a shag. <laughs> You know, if all you're doing is sitting there and you want to watch a good good TV plot, you kind of find all this sex and stuff a bit mm -hmm. extraneous. That's the, I don't right. know where, where you are with watching porno stuff with the wife. Do you, do you like doing that? Oh, I, I normally feel 
awkward. Awkward, yeah, it? exactly. Yeah. We were doing all of this, you know, right, yeah. oh my God. Uh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, and, yeah, and there were sort of hands moving down, sort of, you yeah. know. And you think, oh, But there's oh. stuff like that in Ozark, isn't it, where he's oh. watching, you think he's watching porn on his laptop, and yeah. actually someone's found him a picture of his wife having an affair. And oh, so right. it turns the whole thing on its head. You think, oh, what, like, he's a sleazeball. He's talking to clients. Oh, right. And he's watching this. Right. And then, it, then you think he's watching stuff of himself, and you think that's a bit sleazy. Then it turns out. You know, so they're constantly turning it on its head. Arrested it, it, Development. Really quite Arrested clever. Development was the comedy series. Oh, that, right, okay. That, that, that boy, he was a connoisseur of every, everything on TV, mm. just watches non-stop TV. Yeah. And, and he says, like, if you don't think Arrested Development is just like the funniest thing ever, then you're like, just it was like getting Seinfeld, I you've suppose. Got, you've got no taste, basically. You are the crappiest dad in the whole world. Basically. Did you watch Happy? No. And the so I recommended that to you. People say I should. Okay. The, the premise of Happy yeah. is it's a typical nasty, horrible cop drama with a twisted, dirty, sort of like ex-disgraced cop, yeah. except he's got an invisible friend who is a fluffy, blue, flying unicorn. And does it work? It shouldn't, but it does. Okay. Yeah, good. Okay. And, and happy is the name of the little I will invisible put that friend on the list. I gather you've started watching Narcos, Narcos Mexico. Mexico. I've watched one episode and I'm already loving it. Not least because at one point the Mexican military produced a Hotchkiss machine gun, which obviously had me. Well, I won't say moist because that would be unpleasant. But yeah, <laughs> that really it, it, would be unpleasant, <laughs> wouldn't it? <laughs> It, but I'm it sure got that me very excited. Many of our American special friends would understand that you yes, I'm moist, sure they over would. moist over weaponry. So that's yeah. good. Mm. And also quite plausible. I mean, even though it was a French World War I machine gun, it, it, it went all over the world because it actually wasn't a bad piece of kit. I, I, was, I was very interested to discover where Sense Amelia came from. Yeah, the, the, I, didn't, I didn't know that. a very good explanation of why... It was the without seed, and it, it could be packaged out. I thought that scene was done really well, where they show the bundle, one bundle against another, and yeah. the, the drugs boss immediately sees the sense of yeah. this. and The uh, sense. The sense, sense of this. Amelia. Orca, are you yeah. going to sit down? Because you're being quite awkward. I know you lend a bit of diversity awk to awk the whole... Awkward. Awkward. So, later on, yeah, some people on Twitter, uh, and I, I don't know, there is not a place in hell hot enough for these people, have been saying... Actually, Narcos Mexico, nah. They, they yeah. like the Pablo Escobar ones. Which are, have you seen? Oh, all of them, yeah. Yeah. They're very good, but I, I think that Narcos Mexico is very much the equal. And it's got... Now it's in its stride. I mean, this is effectively the fourth season of, Mexi of, of, of Narcos, isn't it? They're really, they do really good set pieces now. Mm. Some of the party sequences and the coke-taking sequences... Mm -hmm. Haven't and got to this, any of that yet. The, right at the end, there is the most epic drugged up shoot, shootout. I, I think that, that. Of sort of Scarface proportions. You know how people say that, that the box set TV has sort of transcended cinema? Mm. And I have to say, I think they're right. That, 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 that Narcos Mexico, on its game, is as good as Scarface, is as good as Goodfellas, it's Godfather. Good as, it's, yeah, yeah. It's all of those rolled into one, isn't yeah. it? And I, you can ration yourself with it unless you want to do the typical binge thing, which I, I can't do more than one episode a week. No, no, no. Only the young can do that. But I do think that we need another World War II drama. I think it's been, do you not think? Yeah, uh, never, never too many. No. There's been, there's, there's been a bit of a lull. It seems to me. I mean, the BBC's virtually stopped doing stuff about World War Two. They got, became obsessed with World War One, which is well, fine. Well, you know, the, it was a good sign when they did a when I know it was a film, but doing Dunkirk and people had very varied opinions of it. But uh, I'm getting quite into the whole Dunkirk thing on the reenactment front because of the it'll be the 80th anniversary coming up. So it's right. sort of um, it's, you'll be going as a Frenchie, obviously. Yeah, I will be those poor sods who manned the barricades while the, the Brits ran past. So yeah. every time I get the whole, oh, you're French, are you? You're off surrendering today. And I go, no, I'm covering the British retreat at Dunkirk. Yeah. That shows them. Yeah. No, but it, uh, you know me and my particular weirdness for loving the French. No, I, no, I, I, no. I make no apology I, for it. I think the French are really, really good at being French. 
and I love them for I, I totally respect them. But I, I'm sure I mentioned this to you before. When I last went to Paris, just after the the the, the various massacres, the Bataclan mm. thing, I was there in, in in December that year. And Charlie Hebdo would have been pretty. pretty that was well, yeah, the, but it was the Bataclan massacre, which, which happened about about a couple of weeks earlier. And and Paris was there was that slight tension there. But but what I loved loved about going back to Paris was seeing. 14-year-old girls standing in doorways smoking cigarettes. Mm -hmm. I just thought, yeah, this is two fingers to... It just seems like such a crime now, doesn't it, seeing it happen? It's, it looks so daring and yeah, the French. outrageous. The but French that, that is the French all over. They, they are constantly giving two fingers, although it's a bit of a British No one likes them to they the don't man. care. And, yeah. I, and I, I respect them for that. Even, even though we... we we've they been, they we've are more like us than we on. give them credit for. Yeah. And yeah. the only reason we generally end up hating them is a lot of their anger is directed against us at various times, you know, burning our lamb or Well, obviously, because they're lorries. bullshit frogs. I mean, yeah. that's what they do. Yeah. But we love them. Um, Although, Dick. What? The Germans. Well, oh, you've developed a newfound oh, love mine, for, the, for, mine our, for got, our other great I enemies. I love the Germans so much. And, you know, this, is, this, is, this has been... It's like, it's, like, it's like kind of suddenly discovering you're gay, but actually knowing having known it for many years, really, mm -hmm. you know? No. I mean, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm not about to do that. But there was, there was, a, there was, a, there was a, the a theatre critic um, for, the, for the male, Jack Tinker, right. who, who I think had, maybe I'm making this up, I think it's true, he had children, and then he, later on in life, middle age, he decided he was gay. Right. And actually, I think that's quite a good thing to do. You have your kids. Well, you can have something for your retirement, don't you? Have your you? kids, and then... Not have to spend any time with women anymore. Yeah. Oh, now we're talking. Oh, no, we're not. No. So, um, where was it? We're going to lose our so, women special friend so very quickly. I, I had this experience a few years ago where I got sent by the Telegraph to go and write about... This was in the days when journalism wasn't shit, mm -hmm. where you actually got expenses. Mm -hmm. You got time to write articles. You got paid for the articles. Decent whack. You wore outrageous suits. Y yeah, but I wasn't on this assignment. I got sent out to Ibiza to write about the club scene. Right. And, and what sort I, of year would this be? About 20 years ago. Right, and blimey. And I, got, I stayed at a hotel which was swarming with Germans. And we're supposed to hate the Germans. We're supposed, they're supposed to put their beach towels on, on, our, on the deck chairs yep. so we can't lie anywhere. That old thing. I got on like a house on fire with, with the Hun. I, I just thought, I played water polo or whatever, the Wasser polo, I suppose mm. it would be. Um, I had all sorts of fun with these with, with these these crowds, and I thought this feels wrong and yet right because after all we are all Saxons. Well, they're the Saxons, mm. and we're the Anglo bit, I suppose. But you know, you know, you know what I'm saying. Um, and my Lyme disease. Thanks for asking, Dick. Uh, um, <laughs> my Lyme disease. You did say we were going to come on to it later. Okay. So, this is a... so I went, and we'll, we may come back to it. But for my treatment for my Lyme disease. And thank you, by the way, for all those special friends who helped fund my... You got your funding, I, didn't you? Yeah, that was yeah, 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 yeah. spectacular. Was very good. Um, I went out to Frankfurt and got treated by German doctors and nurses. Mm. And I loved... There was nobody I would rather have put a needle in my arm than a German nurse. Not so much the doctor, apparently, though. Well, that was quite, yeah, that was, that was quite funny. He sort of Doctors jabbed, aren't as good at doing He jabbed around. He, jabbed, he was trying to put in a, um, a cannula. Cannula, yeah. And he jabbed around and said, you are, you're sweating. And I wanted to say, yeah, because you're hurting me and you're not hitting the, need, the, hitting the vein. But I didn't want to embarrass him because it would, it would have upset his professional yeah. pride. So I said, yes, I am. And then he said, perhaps one of our lovely nurses would... And I said, yes, I think so. I think so. <laughs> Please. Yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. But anyway, so I spent it's a well -known fact two weeks in Frankfurt, right which, which the Germans hate. The Germans think Frankfurt, you ask in German about Frankfurt, and mm. they say, oh, yeah, we hate Frankfurt. It's really boring. There's so many, so many nicer places. I like Frankfurt. I like being there. I, lots of nice restaurants. Um, my best ever sushi I had in Frankfurt, mm -hmm. even though I wasn't really supposed to eat fish or meat or anything because of this bloody vegan diet. Can you imagine, Dick? I mean, you, you spent years as a vegetarian. About eight years, yeah. Yeah, OK, eight years. But I can tell you, your eight years as a vegetarian was not nearly as bad as my three months as a vegan plus no, ve plus. Vegan, I mean, dropping the milk, the cheese, the, the few things that make vegetarianism bearable. I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't imagine it. It wasn't just that I... 
obviously I miss the meat and the cheese and the and the milk and the butter and the etc etc eggs but yeah I kind of cheated occasionally with eggs but because in order to get some vitamin B12 hello yeah. because vegans the reason they look so ill is because they're not getting enough vitamins mm. you, you, you can't get apparently the only the only vegetable you get vitamin B12 in is seaweed apparently it's a marmite as well your yeah, marmite's not a vegetable <laughs> no but it's vegan oh yeah right. okay anyway yeah well, whatever um yeah but it gives you thrush doesn't it or candida does <laughs> it yeah well of course it does it's yeah. yeast yeah well, it's, it's got hardly going to help give yeast. it to you it's gonna yeah, yeah. And, and it's gonna feed it if you've already got it but the point was before we have not only was i this. banned from eating a, a meat or anything nice mm. just just vegetables mm. also I was off the alcohol. No, that's what I was going to say. And, that's a double whammy. And off the sugar. Yeah. So no cake. Mm. And off, off bread. At which point you ask yourself, is life worth what living? What can I eat? And um, what else was on? Oh, yes. And I wasn't allowed to eat tin food. Right. So you can imagine how, what I, basically, you're allowed to eat hummus and lentils. I think that right. was about it. Hummus and lentils and anything made with coconut milk. Right. And so what is your... One piece My of prognosis. advice for no, okay. no, for before you give us that, obviously, which we're yeah. interested in. But your one piece of advice for someone who had to eat vegan food: what is the best piece of vegan food for non-vegans? What's oh. the thing you looked forward to? Oh, lentils! Lentils are your friend. Yeah, lentil. I, I see. I've got no problem with that. I know that they're, they're the classic hippie joke food, but why? Actually, I, I, lentils, I cook with them all the time. Lentils are like meat. Lentils are versatile. One of the things I did, one of the really clever things I did, um, the, the Indian lady from the corner shop mm. um, is a very good cook, and I, got, I paid her to cook me two Indian meals a week. And every week you would get a dal, rice, a veg, it was all vegetarian, obviously, mm. a vegetable dish, and chapatis. Mm -hmm. um, Where's this corner shop? I yeah, know it's, it's awesomely good. And was well, this in Frankfurt? Or no, 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 in, in, in England, in England, oh, England. Okay. And so I'd go and collect it of an evening, and it it was so it was actually almost made my vegan hell almost worthwhile. Right. But the variations you can get on the on the dal. You know, when I cook dal at home, the, all my dals taste fairly similar. Mm -hmm. Okay, you, even if you use different types of, of, of dal with urad dal or, or the other yeah. types whose name I forget, the, the shiny ones, the, the, the ones that look, look all kind of oily, oh, you, you, I, I oily and that. orange. Let me growl. Ultimately, they always taste the same. But this, this, when you get cooking by a, a real Indian Indian person, mm. real Indian woman, it's going to be uh, none of this Bangladeshi rubbish that you get in, in every every Indian restaurant in the UK because they're all run by Bangladeshis. Mm. It's not authentic Indian Indian food. Um, the subtlety of the of the, of the spicing and the and the flavourings. You know, they don't just say, "Oh, let's make it a bit hotter," because yeah, because that's what it needs. <laughs> what accent was that? That was an English person trying to kind of demand oh, right. a, okay. demand the hottest vindaloo. I, no, yeah. well, it wasn't my Indian okay, accent. No, 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 Indian no, no. Accent's it wasn't my Indian, Indian accent. Um, it, it, it's just a joy. The the, right. the, the panoply of of, of, of flavours and and the subtleties. It, it's wonderful. Um, so this lentil, is making me very hungry. Lentils, I really, want to lentils right really, really are your friend. Right. And almond milk is your friend. I started eating almond milk porridge, which mm -hmm. I have to say is nicer than porridge made with milk. I we, really got used to it. We tried almond milk recently, and it was a no no go. And maybe we needed the sweetened stuff or something. But uh, no, 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 I use non sweetened, right, okay. I do the hardcore stuff, and I have it with loads and loads of pumpkin seeds and banana and raisins in it right. and it's a good way to start the day okay yeah yeah and are you going to live How, oh. what what is the prognosis now oh now i don't know the thing is okay so i went to this i reckon it's amazing this this place called infusio which doesn't give you antibiotics now there are different schools of thought on how you treat li treat lyme disease which is about the hardest disease to treat in the world. I mean, cancer is a doddle compared with, with Lyme. It's just so elusive and mm -hmm. not helped by the fact that the medical establishment doesn't really want to acknowledge it if it, it, it even exists. Yeah. So it's a, it's a very niche, niche illness, which only special specialist specialists are dealing with. Now, Infusio deals with it not through antibiotics, which is the, the conventional route, but using naturopathic 
methods using uh, a laser bed therapy, using th IV cocktails like Myers cocktail, which is what they give to cancer, cancer patients, um, high dose magnesium, uh, infusions of turmeric, antibacterial stuff, antiviral stuff. And then at the end of your fortnight being on these drips with these German nurses doing stuff. So what they do is they take these, they liposucked out of your lower back, mm -hmm. out of the fat. They, they suck out the fat and then they clean it up in the lab. And apparently the stem cells are inert when they're in your fat. Mm -hmm. But when they remove them and put them in liquid and clean them up, they suddenly become... And then they drip them back into your arm. Mm. And in about six months' time, which, it's, which hasn't happened to me yet, mm. I suddenly feel way better. But we, we can talk about... We'll have a, a special... Lime cast in the yeah. future because it lime I mean, cast it, like it. it might be interesting for people who've got Lyme disease, mm -hmm. for example, and are looking for a way out because it because you know, well, they're, they're, a lot of them are coming out of the woodwork and oh. uh, it's a number that is only increasing. I moment. have become a Lyme service for lots of people. Well, and you I'm, knew that I'm that happy would to happen. do that. No, that's good. I, I, I like helping people. I, I'm well, I'm I've, very I've gone and signed up with the Caldwell Lyme charity and I'm wearing one of their um, Lyme awareness bracelets. It, uh, uh, whatever you call these things. But, um, a Lyme awareness bracelet, I think. I don't think it's a bracelet. What do they call them? They're made of... Band. A caring band. <laughs> Care <laughs> you, oh, caring. I'm trying to think of the Your thing it's made of. Band. Silicon band. Ah, yeah, a anyway. silicon okay. caring band. Let's move on yes? to um, our review of the last... Now, this used to be the last 10 okay. podcasts. It's 15 now. That is why 15. we had the scene at the beginning which only video listeners, video viewers can see, because right. podcast listeners can't, of you not recognising no, me. because... Because you, you didn't, did you? You actually literally did not recognise me. Literally didn't recognise you wearing my uniform no. at the door. No, no. That's sad. Um, you've done 15 podcasts. Oh, and, my God. And you've been out literally fighting the culture wars. I because have. I think that, what with all of Brexit going on, and that seems to be the only subject, I still think... The culture wars are the thing that is actually really going on, and Brexit is just a symptom of the culture wars. I totally agree. Brexit is a manifestation of it. Look, that's what, that's what I meant. Brexit is the Trump revolution, is Victor Orban, is Marine Le Pen, uh, and the Gilets Jaunes, is Salvini. Is Salvini. Is, you go on and on. All is um, Bolsonaro. All around the world, people are sick to death of this Davos-style, European Union-friendly, uh, UN globalist. globalist political elite, mm -hmm. which is not remotely interested in the views of ordinary people and wants to suppress their views indeed. And it was... Brexit was was the the people saying, "Well, I've sold this for a game of soldiers. I don't like this. I don't like political correctness. I don't want this." Uh, uh, this really annoyed me today. The Advertising Standards Authority, or one of its offshoots, banning adverts from gender neutral, sorry, sorry, gender um, gender stereotypes. Mm -hmm. And you think, hang on a second. I, I imagine how we'd feel in the nineteen seventies or the nineteen eighties when. when it, when Bisto advert was on and that mumsy mum was using Bisto and making our family happy. Imagine mm -hmm. if we were told that, that in the future you won't be able to make adverts like this because actually normal families are anathema to, to these social justice warriors and therefore you know, somebody might be offended by the idea of women being happy being mothers. Yeah. We'd, think, we'd think that it, it, it can never happen. There was a, t a time where they deliberately substitute a dad in there and dad's doing the cooking for that typical sort of ad. And that was seen as being a little bit quirky. But now that has to be the norm, doesn't it? Well, Im imagine if you're, you're a, a copywriter and you're trying to, to play with the form and you're trying, yeah, you're trying to mix it up a bit. Yeah. But you're constrained by these rules which say that you can't, you, you can't do that anymore. I mean, the time is ripe now, surely, for an advert in which... A man is not a useless git, and where the woman is not this omnicompetent super being, mm. uh, where you actually have a man being macho and, and you have women being yeah. girly. That, that would, would be, turn the whole thing on its head, so wouldn't it? It, it, would, it would, but you wouldn't. You can't do that no. because that's that's gender stereotyping. No. And I was also thinking about the 
Scotonology, you know, with Maureen yeah, Lippmann yeah. playing the Jewish grandmother. Yeah. That That's would never be allowed now because Jewish grandmothers being concerned about their grandchildren becoming doctors and get, doing well in their exams. I mean, yeah. that's so... That's probably anti-Semitic, isn't it, something? And, and yet it's uh, an observation that every Jewish mum would go, oh, yeah, that's Well, it so was one of the like most popular such... adverts ever because people recognised the truth of yeah, it. Yeah, and it was gentle and it was, it was just a nice little observational comedy. In the same way, the lady, all because the lady loves milk tray. Those were the days when it, advertising land recognised that girls like chocolates, girls need chocolates. Men give girls chocolates in order to shag them uh, as and a milk tray. Abseil through windows. Yeah, well, they, they, men fancied themselves as James Bond, mm -hmm. and, and this is what women want yep. with chocolates. The ad men knew this. Yeah. Anyway, let's go back to dealing with the podcasts. Yeah. I'm going to start um, at the 15th one away, which was very, very uh, relevant to this conversation, Toby Young. Toby. You talked to Tobes about the... Uh, a victim of point and shriek, I've written down here. Point and shriek, and of course, of offence archaeology. Mm -hmm. So, Toby Young, my, my great friend from university and great journalistic colleague at The Spectator and so on. And fellow warrior in the culture has, wars now. Has semi tried to reinvent it, and I think this is a mistake, bless him. Has, because he's done so much good work in education, and he's established free schools which have really benefited kids from poor backgrounds. I, 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 the people criticising Toby Young have not done a fraction of the good he's done to society, mm. and yet they dare criticise him. But Toby, I think, made the mistake. He made two mistakes. Number one, trying to become a semi-part of the establishment. He was given a job, on a tiny job, on some educationalist quango mm -hmm. as an advisor. And instantly... The on top of his many other roles many other like things. that, of governors of various schools and... All of that sort of stuff. And all it took was, the, was for the leftists, the leftist hate mob, to go through a few of his old tweets and old articles, cherry-pick the, 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 the most inapt, the most offensive phrases, and hound him out of his job. So that was his first mistake in putting himself in a position where they could do that to him. Because mm -hmm. I'm not going to go for a government job, I can tell you, because I know I'm not going to get it, so mm -hmm. why bother? And anyway, it would, it would involve working for the man, wouldn't mm -hmm. it? But the, but the second mistake he made was, was apologising. You never apologise to these bastards. No. And also for kind of making out that this was a, this was a sort of left-right thing. Both the left and the right do. I, I, mm. It's not. This stuff comes from the left. Um, when the right do it to a left-wing person, it's because their behaviour is so egregiously wrong yeah. that they deserve to be hounded out of office. It's not the same. There is not an equivalent between that awful person that the New York Times employed, that, that really vicious, nasty um, girl who, who said really unpleasant racist things about white, white people, right, and yeah. Toby Young. Yeah. There's not a moral equivalence. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think it's very sad what happened to Toby, and I, I, I think it's, it's so typical of, of the malignity of the left that they were able to do that to him. Well, it, even now that he's actually writing about it, about his experiences, they, they're, they're, they're coming out again, yeah. and, and it's sort of, you know, that the, they won't be happy until they've got us all. They and they'll work down by the, the, the most um, standout examples like Milo, working their way down to the more um, moderate people like Sargon and Toby, uh, he's even further more moderate. So if they're going for people like Toby, then no one is going to be no, safe. No, no, exactly. I mean, Toby's, a, as I, I told him on the podcast, Toby's a cuck. So, yeah, no, it, it is that left thing. And if, Every, if it's not safe for cucks out there, then yeah. it, it's safe for no everyone one. Everyone I don't like is Hitler, is, is, is what, it, what the left is today. So, yeah, next podcast. So that was Toby. Next one, could you remember what it was? No, it was it Chris could. Snowden. Well, Anti-nanny state. And you were talking a lot about the sugar tax. Yeah, yeah. He's, well, he's a good egg, isn't I, he? Snowden is fantastic. And the sugar tax, all I would say is sugar tax, I will never, ever, ever be able to forgive George Osborne and Jamie Oliver for destroying LucasAid. This is your crusade, isn't it? it the is. LucasAid crusade. LucasAid, when I was, when I was gr growing up, and in fact, even now, almost. Me too. I grew up almost, with you, almost mostly. Today, yeah. I used to think that if ever I had to go to a firing squad, my last request would be a glass of Lucasade. I loved Lucasade. 
and to have it snap. I would I would rather have a, a glass of Lucozade than I would a glass of champagne. Old old school Lucozade, but yep. n- not least because I hate champagne anyway. Mm. I mean, I'm not sure if it was Lucozade or gin, I'd I'd go for the Lucozade. But I do I like that that electric orangeness yeah, of it. Yeah, the, and the crinkly wrapper the it used to come wrapping. in and the when it was still in bottles. Now, they were get, some people were going to crowdfund a, a, a new, new Lucozade with the, with, the, with, the, with the original formula. Right. But I don't know what became of it. But they would have my support were they to do so. Well, isn't the evidence that all of those drinks that um, kept their recipe and just bumped their price up instead to pay the sugar tax rather than avoid it, isn't all the evidence that they carried on doing a lot better and no one went for the reformulated stuff? I can, I can believe that. I, I haven't read that article. And if you can, if you can find a link to, me, link, link to it for me, that would be fantastic. I just, um, I hope it's true. Mm. So if anyone, if any, any special friend has, has well, that evidence, I bet Chris Snowden's got access to, probably, to, to that sort of but stuff. But that would be... It may be, even have been one of his um, That would be a good that, news story that I could write well, about. Well, Ribena was another one that, that, that I think reformulated. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, they were handing it out at stations and they stuff. Killed this right, is they killed Kenny, Ribena. they killed Ribena. Yeah. Um, they, did, they, did they kill Urenbrew? Yes, because... Uh, You'd have thought the Scots, the Scots... They were stockpiling it. The Scots... Our special Scots friend has so been building bulky. up a cellar full of it. Aren't they? I mean, yeah. the Scots, the, the worst people on Twitter, I mean, the, the worst people on Twitter, there's lots of candidates, but I would say cybernats are among the worst. So the, the Scots are very good at being bolshie. And you would have thought if they took away their national drink, that mm. there might be, well, a kind of like wearing woad and coming across the, the mm. border and, um, you know, William... Wallace well, it's, a, it, you know, it's the boiling a frog thing. It, it, you realise that uh, they're not noticing. You can just turn the heat up. Although, except what? Except Take a, oh, they had frogs minimum pricing on alcohol up there as well. Yeah. But you know what? Frogs don't do that. Frogs don't. They jump out. Do they? Yeah. So, so that's bo- it's a bit like, and I and I feel eternally guilty. It sounds like you've tried it. <laughs> yeah, ob- obviously, <laughs> obviously I've tried it. It's like the one in times of universal deceit. Telling um, the truth tell is an act of revolution. Act of, yeah, Orwell did not say that, and uh, and I I fell for this because somebody did the. Yeah. black print on a photograph of something yeah. uh, somebody and you, and you read this and you think well it's got pl- black print on top of the <laughs> photograph they must have said it how yeah. could they not because they'd never have allowed the black print on top of their <laughs> photograph if they hadn't said it yeah. would they I hate those people I, I, I'm, you know I'm not I'm, not a, bit, I'm a lover not a fighter yeah. well, actually I'm a fighter as well obviously. and you're not much of a lover uh, <laughs> right fuck off apparently but but <laughs> stop it stop this you're, you're, I'm you're, sorry you're just, it's mean just that's really not fair and I've brought you so many nice gifts as well. Gift, gift, gift of brotherly love. Look, if if I were to have mass ex- executions, mm-hmm. the people definitely first against the wall would be the people responsible for fake quotes in front of photographs on Twitter, mm-hmm. and even worse, fake photographs from history. Mm-hmm. Do you know th- this is a yeah, thing yeah, now? Yeah, yeah. I hate. I think them. we're going to see more and more of it though. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. People inventing. There's one of there's one of of uh, Victorians cross dressing or something. Yeah. This is this is a fake thing, it, and the idea is to show that hey, the Victorians are much more liberated than we thought. Yeah. You can and prove actually, anything with a fake photo, yeah, yeah, though, you can. can't you? Yeah, yeah, you can. Um, back before uh, after Chris Snowden, your um, Julia Hartley Brewer. I love Julia. Of course She's you great. do. Ju- Julia, Julia, I think is is. The, the only mistake Julia makes, and, and actually it's a necessary mistake for her survival, is that she, she, she's persuaded herself that she's not really right-wing, that she's a kind of free spirit, but actually mm. a bit like Rod Little. Mm. It, it's, it, she's another of those people that actually is basically... Rod maintains that he's left-wing yeah. to this day. Yeah, actually, you know what, Dick? I'm left-wing. Watch my career soar after mm. this, after this confession. <laughs> if we could, if we could... You're outing yourself if we have a, here and can now. Can we have a, a, what do they call these nuggetry video sections where you just have, you know, put it up on the internet. Just nuggetry. Saying, I'm, I'm left wing. All right. I mean, it'd be like one of those fake quote things. Yeah, do it. And people will, people will know. Black I, text now, over a now photo. I've said it, I'm left wing. Yeah. Watch my career rocket. We need someone else to out you as left wing. That would probably be better. Um, Owen Jones. Yeah. Owen Jones and Ooh. 
Someone started. said one of the things they wanted to see out of this podcast yeah. was us saying nice things about the following people. Oh, yes. And I think Owen was on there. John claude Claude Juncker. Okay, I, I, okay, I'll do those two, first of all. Owen Jones wears really nice knitwear. And I, I think if I were gay, I would definitely be very happy having sex with him. <laughs> I, I mean... <laughs> Although, do you know what? Actually, quite interestingly, I had, just before I came out here, um, my family, boy, girl, and, and wife, mm -hmm. all said that they would sleep, they would happily sleep with John Cena. Who? He's a wrestler. All right. I think, I think that's how I pronounce How it. would you know about wrestlers? We saw him on the Graham Norton show. We'd never, mm -hmm. I'd never heard of him before. Why would he be watching the Graham Norton show? Uh, because when your foul teenage children come back from school right. and university, you have to watch the shit they want to watch. Neither of my children seem to watch TV. No, well, you, you, you've skipped all that. Right. So, okay. okay. Um, so, Jean-Claude Jean Juncker, I really loved him much more when he totally dissed Theresa May. Right. And what was the word he used? Nebulous. I did it. Where did he find that word? Where did a, a Luxembourgish man... A Luxembourgois, man... A drunk, where would, he, where would he get hold of a word like that? It's amazing. We must have said, somebody must have sidelined up to him and said, you want a word? You want a, you, you, uh, have a word. Have a word, have a word. <laughs> Here it is, John claude ne Nebula. 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 I will use it. I will use it on Theresa May. And, and he did. Yeah. Does he have a French accent? Uh, yes, I think he does. I will use it. A nebulous. Because he, today's video of him that's doing the rounds of him muzzing this lady's hair, you know, they have to go and pay. He does that all the time. On. He does the He's muzzing hair. He's very touchy, isn't he? He's very touchy. touchy. Feely, very he hands uses on. touchy feelingness as a weapon. People are saying that there's a, a Me Too waiting to happen there in the EU. The, and that would be glorious. The entirety to watch. of the EU is paedophilia embodied. And there's a sure. whole edifice waiting to come down. and probably genocide as well. I, it's yeah. just, there is, n there is nothing I would, I would well, not expect of the, the no e crime. The EU ninja assassins are going to be briefed on your yeah, yeah, well, assassination. Yeah, as come and speak. get me, EU. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Um, before that, Mark Littlewood, head of the IEA. Mark, you see, look, I love the IEA. How to win the economic argument. There's a question your, I want uh, to know about the IEA, though, hmm? and it's been bothering me for some time. Not who funds them. Who fnuds them. Who floods who, them. Who fnuds, fnuds. the IEA? <laughs> because they, do you know what? They always wriggle. They wriggle like stuck insects on a pin. Mm. They do. Yeah. Yeah. But no, no, Mark Littlewood. And you know the interesting thing about Mark Littlewood? And I think this is a gift I have. Mm. I have a gift, a magical gift for bringing out people's interestingness. Mm -hmm. Mark was desperate to talk about football. Yeah. And I thought, no way. I'm not going to let somebody talk about football on one of my podcasts. Right. At the final section, I, I sort of unleashed him. You know, I released the hound. Yeah, yeah. And instead of sort of biting my leg or just going to sleep and being really boring, yeah. I watched the hound run. You know, instead of going to sleep like your hound, I watched the hound run and frolic and gamble. And it was really interesting yeah. watching the hound of football frolic and gamble. So, well done, Mark, for making sport interesting on this one occasion. Right. So, that was good. Um, so, before that, it was Sutiam Godazi, the amazing 16-year-old Iranian girl who is uh, so, unexpectedly conservative. I rarely, in, in my later life, have I felt so uncomfortable as I did when approaching this 16-year-old, this pretty 16-year-old girl that I'd never met before and saying... Come to my, come to my, my secret room. Come to my hotel and record a podcast with me. And I went. I took her out for lunch beforehand. Mm. And um, this was this was totally honest. I, I was a great admirer of hers, having seen her tweeting. And I was yeah. thinking, this girl is really, really sound. She was brought up in Iran, in a particularly religious part of Iran. She wore the hijab for the first eleven years of her life, and she came to England and decided off her own bat that that that. Islam was oppressing her and that she didn't want any part of it anymore. She wanted to live the Western life and she, she decided she was a conservative. How brave is that? That's so, incredibly brave. So I was desperate to have her on the podcast and I took her out to, to lunch. And I, I wasn't sure quite what, what the... Beha in How this does age one of, behave in those In the certain... age of Me Too, you know, do you sort of peck him on both cheeks, you know, in the, in the, the way that one used to as a 
chat with a yeah. girl or do you or do you sort of maintain a very frosty yeah yeah no, it's, anyway it all passed off fine right and and she came across very well i mean occasionally you realize yes sure there is a 16 year old girl there but there the was stuff a, a much older head do. on those shoulders yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, she's going places. She wasn't so sure. hot on the digressions. They, they, they don't have much hinterland. No, they, no, of course. That, that's where you're yeah. going to fall down yeah. on that front. Um, then it was Yaron Brook. Um, is he the... the Yaron Jew, Brook? Yaron Jewish Brook. sounding you, you, guy. You, you, sorry, Yaron Brook is a libertarian, uh, Ayn Rand. Yeah, that's the one. So he's an objectivist. And he's got this, this out outrageously Israeli style accent is that right is that what his accent was it was um d d yeah yeah I, mean, I think he was in the Israeli military I mean oh, right, I, okay. I, I don't we just love the Israeli we didn't oh, even do Fowder we didn't do, well no we've done, we've done I think Fowder, we covered Fowder okay, before Fowder. but uh, just to remind you that everyone should watch Fowder yeah Yaron Brook was 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 fascinating he was fluent animated surprisingly didn't like Trump although no. can I tell you something about about Trump yeah. I thought that all people like us, all people on the right side of the argument, all really conservatives who totally get it, recognise that Trump is the is the business. Mm. But then the other week, um, my Swiss friend went out to interview Tucker Carlson, mm. and um, um, he doesn't like Trump, or rather, he's disappointed in him. And, you know, Tucker Carlson is, is as sound as sound can be, is he not? Mm -hmm. He's absolutely, he, he hates the left. He recognises how totally evil they are. Uh, he recognises that Alexandria, what is it, Ocado Cortez or Cortez Ocado, yeah, yeah, Avocado, yeah. whatever her name is, nightmare, that, that she, is, she is the horrifying future that, that, yeah. that, that faces us if we don't, if we don't support um, people like... Um, uh, I'm, 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 I'm having a sugar low here. I'm, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just, just, just. Um, anyway, he does not think that Trump is doing a, a very good job. Right. Which I thought was fascinating, because I thought that, that, that he would be... Totally well, it's an angle, isn't it? I mean, it's sort of, uh, he, he's been made up to be so much the Messiah that anything that he does fail to do is going to you know, reflect badly on him. But he, he's constantly doing unexpected things, and that, that's part of the, the joy of Trump, isn't it? Yeah, but he was saying that he wasn't doing, he hadn't built the wall. He wasn't, that he was kind of too flaky to, to, to really do the necessary stuff. I mean, yeah. I, I think he has had several wins, like, like his Supreme Court picks, for example. Yeah. He's, he's, now, he's now redressed the balance whereby the Supreme Court was, was just a, a, a leftist talking shop, mm. and now it's not. But thank, boy, thank did that goodness. hurt, though, didn't it? I yeah, mean, the, and, and, and the low taxes, I think that's got to be good. America, America was paying far too high taxes. I think he's been fighting good things, doing good things on the culture war front. I think he's, so, so yeah. The dogs are about to perk up because yeah. they've just heard their, their mum has back. returned. Yeah. Okay. Are you going to go and see your mum, Orca? You want to stay here. Um, before that, uh, Dr. Craig Wright, your Bitcoin Aussie. No, interesting, because lots of people, well, I say no, three or four people said, look, he, came, he claims to be Satoshi the guy who invented mm. Bitcoin and is not. I, I sort of didn't, I didn't really form a view because I'm not in a position to form. I, who knows who T Satoshi is? I just thought That's he was... That's not necessarily the most important fact of that, was it? Presumably, he was in on Bitcoin early enough to have made a few bob mm. and he gave a very interesting interview and I'd like to see him again. I think mm. he was... No, um, I agree. Um, before that, Catherine Blakelock... Catherine Blakelock, UKIP yeah, economics expert. At the time, expert. before she, she she lost the job after that, after that, right? Um, maybe we're speaking out of turn. She um, was the UKIP economic spokesman, uh, a fellow uh, alumna of. Well, it could be, can it be a fellow alumna if I'm a man? I don't know. Anyway, she she is an, an, an alumna of of Christchurch, and she comes from comes from a very very poor background. Mm -hmm. Um, came from a care home where she was sexually abused and stuff and somehow managed to get her way into Oxford and is sound as a pound. Mm. She was fascinating. Some people, as I say, thought that she was my best ever podcast. She was quite scary in you know, uh, it was her, a bit some of her predictions. Yeah. It was like, you know, when you do hear these economic experts, it's like, oh my God. Well, I we worry. I, I do worry that, that, that the way things are going, we're not going to get Brexit. I do worry that... 
I see how bright the future could be mm. if Britain forged its own path outside the European Union in a, in a Jacob Rees-Mogg style or a mm. Boris Johnson style. Yeah. And I think, how good would that be? As we and outlined two years, two years ago in Brexit the movie, that's mm. what we wanted. Mm -hmm. We wanted low regulation, low taxes. We'd become the Singapore of, 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 of yeah. Europe. And it's what, it's what not just the left wants to stop, but also most of the Tory party, it seems to me. But you know what? I All think of the Tory MPs, anyway. Theresa May, she won that, that vote. You know, they, the, all the cucked Tory MPs came out in favour of her and she predictably won. And I should have woken up the next morning feeling completely downcast. But I don't know, the culture war continues. It's, it, the same people who voted to leave are still wanting to leave, despite what everyone wants to say. We're all still out there fighting that, that war. It, she, we are, she's we're not so going to go away. In it. We're no. not going to go away. Oh, look, the vicious dog is back. Yeah. The next one... Um, was James Tooley, educationalist, James private Tooley. schools in the third world, I've got written down, and that brings it all back, because he was genuinely fascinating, a very well-travelled individual. I love, I love meeting reformed leftists mm. who've just seen the, seen the, found the path of righteousness and, and, and truth and come over to our side. And what was particularly interesting about James Tooley is that he works in about the most left-wing uh, section of the world, the education. education. And he has this devastating thesis, which is well, devastating for the left, that is which, is, which is that private schools are always better than government schools, which to us is, is like, duh. duh. Yeah. But he has the evidence, and he's been all around the world going to... Sierra Leone to to India to Nigeria to etc etc. He was in prison in India, a, a corrupt corrupt copper put him in, yep, put him yeah, in that prison. Was, that was a great was story. All told on and the I went to see his lovely little school in 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 Durham, right, where of course the local educational lefty educationalists tried to put off parents sending their children there. It was so mm -hmm. lovely, it, uh, it, and it, and it's really really cheap, right. You could. Ordinary people could afford to send their children there. Which is the point he was making, that they do that in third world countries yeah. where it's as little as sort of like five dollars a term or something like that. Do you know who I've got coming up? No. Uh, in, on, a, on, a, on a similar theme to James Tooley, Catherine Burblesing. Burblesing. Yes. Brilliant. She's I been... I went to I've noticed school. your Twitter conversations <gasps> and saying, no, I do want you on the pod, it's going to happen. I went to her school yeah. and it's amazing. It's absolutely, but but I, I'll well, I think you have to wait for that for that okay. podcast. Um, before that, well, uh, sorry. Next up in chronological order was the Mog, the Mogster, the Mogmeister. What can one say about Listen, just the legend? Mog, just ledge. It was fantastic being with him, and second second visit as well. I know the Mog. I know he's he's. I'm 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 really impressed that he's, he will still give you the time of day. I mean he's he's got a. To be fair, I haven't exactly dissed him, but but I agree with you. He's he's uh, he has demands on his time, and it mm. was it was nice that he he still thinks of the little people. Right. He, yeah. rem he remembers where he came from. <laughs> After um, Jacob Rees-Mogg, Lloyd Evans, Spectator Lloydy. Theatre Critic. That was a nice little relaxing break, and you build it as such, and it was um, homely and friendly and artsy. It was nice. One of the in the new not Delling Pole stroke second best podcast in the world mm -hmm. podcast, I hope to carry on mixing it up a bit. So where we get conversations with people you've never heard of mm -hmm. about things which had nothing to do with politics, mixed with people like Jacob Rees-Mogg talking about nothing but politics. Well, you know what? It's like real life, isn't it? It is. And um, that's how I run my Twitter account. If I want to show the world the cake I've just eaten, I will quite happily post it immediately after a very insightful political piece. They're very insightful your political pieces. They are, aren't they? They are so insightful. <laughs> insightful. Yeah. So, yeah. People well, are always telling me it's so insightful, Dick. The, the mission of these podcasts has always been to replace the horror that is travelling on, on your, on your, in your car and listening, look, searching through the dials for some talk radio and ending up with radio frigging for mm. talking about the tragedy of of being a i don't know a, a kind of gay muslim in bradford 
Whatever. But whatever. It's, it's, always, it's all this kind of tedious minority There's a thing stuff. with Radio 4. It can be wonderful for like 15 minutes. And you think, you know what? Radio 4 is all right. When was that moment? You, well, okay. you, occasionally you get in you, you between... You get glimpses of it with, in our time with Melvin Bragg. Even though Melvin Bragg is a, is a, is a lefty, at the same time, he's kind of old school, socialistic, northern lefty. He's mm. not the ghastly new left. He has cultural values. He believes in education. He believes in history. Yeah. He believes in knowledge, which they don't anymore. They're all thick ass, aren't they? Well, the other one I like yes. uh, um, from the Radio 4 show is uh, what the Reverend Richard Coles thing on the I Saturday like, morning. I That's like nice. Richard Coles, Reverend Richard Coles. He's lovely. I, I had one of the nicest lunches I ever with Richard Coles. I interviewed him two years ago, we mm -hmm. went out to have liver, or I had liver anyway, mm. lamb's liver, in a pub in Northamptonshire, and it was just wonderful. Because, right. like, well, he's he doesn't hate me. Good. He might even do a podcast with that me, you never know. That would be lovely, wouldn't it? Um, Interestingly, by the way, I'm not sure, now that my podcasts are not Breitbart, I'm mm. not sure whether people would be more or less likely. Well, this is it. A lot of people say never Breitbart, the never Breitbarters, as I'm now calling I've had, them. I've had people refuse they to do the podcast the because they don't want to be associated with Bright, which is, which, is, which is sad because ultimately it's me and I, I'm not changed by no. whether I write do Breitbart. Equally, there may be some who think, well, if, you, if it's not going out on Breitbart, I'm not going to be asked to do, do your little... Mm. Well, the, yeah. Yeah. That's so we'll see. on balance. The next one was um, Stephen Place, your ex-copper, yeah. who was great because I've been having a little bit of a dilemma on Twitter about cops. Because I've got a, a few copper friends, believe yeah. it or not, and ex-coppers. In fact, all my copper friends were just counting the days until they could get out. Because well, because they get it, bloody good retirement. Well, it's not just that. It's just that they are all sick to death of the PC, pun intended, yeah. uh, nonsense that they have to put up with. And the fact that they would rather be catching real criminals than chasing people who have said upsetting things on the internet. Uh, but a lot of them came out of the woodwork on Twitter saying... You can't blame the cops themselves, they, they hate all this. And yet, you just need to point them to accounts like the, the West Yorkshire Police Wakefield Rural account, who were, were threatening people being arrested for saying offensive things on Facebook. They were actually saying they were going to use the Malicious Communications Act yeah. to arrest these people for saying hurty things on Facebook. Now, these are accounts coming from individual parts of police forces. So presumably there's genuine policemen behind these Well, Twitter I don't know. Accounts. I think they probably, They're not home office. they probably outsource their Twitter to somebody who's done diversity studies and gender studies and, and is imbued with all this PC. Okay, and voice. for every cop who puts on a bumblebee suit and paints his fingernails yeah. blue and well, wears I agree. the high I, heels I, I for didn't a day. quite buy Stephen's line that actually we're only obeying orders and we, we mm. all hate it. I think, some, I think a worrying percentage of them actually are into this stuff. Because, I, they're, I've seen, because they're quite thick. I've seen them they're, being trained. And uh, they, I was at a, a reenactment, funnily enough, where we were sharing a bar with some police trainees. Yeah. And our lot were singing... Eight bawdy 18th century songs yes. oh, and uh, the police trainees were constantly looking at their training officer to see whether they could laugh and enjoy it react, yeah. and it was like are we allowed to find that funny and it was horrific to watch because I, it was obvious to me what was going yeah. on they, they were uncomfortable with the political incorrectness of it all and um, you know they didn't want to seem to be laughing and enjoying themselves at something that was quite obvious. How does the how does the 18th century song go? I couldn't possibly repeat that for you. Oh, really? I, I, no, I, I wouldn't be able to remember it. But it was oh, okay. you know <laughs> songs about prostitutes in bars and and that sort of stuff. Yeah. But you know just just the usual traditional bar type stuff. Um, so no, but he was good. I liked him a lot, and I'm I'm enjoying banter with him on on Twitter even now. Because he was the one who said Ozark was good, and I'm saying I don't get you sometimes. Okay. And, all right. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, all right. Uh, which leads us almost up to date. We had Ben Spence, journalist, millennial, meme artist. I loved Ben. I love him. I'd like to see him again. He's really sound, really bright. Yeah. Gives, gives one hope. Out. Like like our cameraman, gives, gives us gives hope, hope of the next millennials. generation. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not just... Every now and again, you meet a millennial who's, who's Gives not you hope. high on kimchi and, and beard juice or whatever it is they do. <laughs> God, they are annoying, though. They really are. Just, just 
how did I suppose it's like the Great Plague. Mm. God decided that he would blight the world with, yeah. you know, frogs and boils and then millennials. So how the bla- Great Plague happened? Yeah. Right, okay. <laughs> um, Dublin Festival of Politics was your last two. Well, the Dublin Festival... the sound quality... Sound quality was just... It was difficult because... Nothing to do with me. I, I started listening. I thought, what am I going to... It's like listening to someone else's Walkman while they're wearing mm-hmm. it. But... Cut yep. through that, you know, great unmissable stuff oh. with some lovely Irish accents, it has to be said. It is nice to hear. Did anyone uh, say feck? Um, I don't think they did, but... No. Uh, I tried to make some Irish jokes. Mm-hmm. I tried to get into the spirit, because that's what I do. And can I say, Dick, that when this plan works, the plan, the plan is for, in five years' time, I want you not to have to, like, work, work, work. You're mm-hmm. going to be doing shit with me. We're going to be a thing. We're going to be the Dick and James. Obviously, I'm going to do other things. I, mean, I won't do everything with you. But we're just going to go and go around the world and do stuff and just shit post. Do stuff at reenactments and all that yeah, sort Yeah, whatever, of... whatever. We'll do, and, and I can see that we're going to build a loyal crowd of, of special friends and, and friends with our merchandising, with our crowdfunding thing, we're going to have special events. Mm-hmm. And we're going to be able, the more support we get through um, crowdfunding mm-hmm. and, and sponsorship, you know, you, you get your name in lights, the more cool stuff we're going to do. I mean, I'm, I'm concerned at the moment, for example, that there's not enough diversity in, in, the, in this, this, this panel of two of us. We're both, we're both white, middle class. In fact, we come from the same family. Where are the black people? We can aff- we'll be able to afford black people on the show. We'll be able to afford disabled people. We'll get lesers. I, mean, le- I know some lesbians yeah. who will happily participate on, on the show. I know g- I've got l- so many gay, peop- gay friends, you would think I were gay. In fact, I probably am gay. Um, what else? Disabled people. I know some disabled people who would happily come on the show. We can, we can cover those diverse bases. Great. Um, we can have Bring better locations. On. We can afford. We can afford better, better cameramen than we, we can. We've we got. can afford to pay our current <laughs> wonderful cameraman. That, <laughs> we can, I'm sure he'd appreciate we can afford, that. Yeah, I think we can afford to. We, we can't mention his name. Do you know why we can't mention his name? No. Can we, we can't mention his name, can we? No. We can. Is it? Yeah, allowed. Yeah. Alex. <gasps> can, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> You're, because you've not just broken just, the fourth wall. You've want, just gone and smashed it. I don't want it. to get you into trouble because same thing. Associating it's a bit like Toby Young. Um, we could do for, do for Toby Young what his old tweets did for him. No, for you, I mean. We could do for you what Toby's, <laughs> Toby's old <laughs> tweets did for him. Is what I was trying to say. Um, yeah. Well, anyway, we 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 put, so so that's the plan. Um, obviously, I'm going to carry on with Breitbart, but but I kind of you know I think it's about time. I was like, we, we became like the Milo the, without the kind of scandal, you know? That would be you good, know wouldn't what, it? The scandal will never be far behind because they're going to try and bring us down. But we're not yeah. going to, you know, we, we won't be. Yeah, but you know, I've got them banged. I, I, I've got my get out of jail three. What's that? There was footage earlier on of me being nice to the dangerous dog. <laughs> <laughs> so people are going to suddenly think I'm nice. They're going to, my cover is blown. So what, what were you about to say about what, we, what was the last thing we were going to do? Oh, special friend. I have a message to you because you are my very special and only friend. Only with your support can we create podcasts and vidcasts of the magnificence that I think you will require in the future. So here's what you need to do. You need to go to my, my website, which is dellingpoleworld.com maintained by a fantastic Canadian who just looks after me so well and I love him very much. He's called Richard and he lives in the backwoods of Canada and he's one of us. You go to the website and you'll find the details, I'm going to, I'm going to post them up, of where you can give your, your crowdfunding donations and you can communicate with me. You can tell me what stuff you want in the podcast. I mean, I may ignore you completely, but I probably won't, because I'm quite interested in hearing what you've got to say. And you can you can help me decide on the direction that it's going to go in. And obviously, you can help you can help make it incredible. Just think about that. You can help make the Delingpole Vidcast podcast incredible. 
you can, we can change the world, we can make the world a better place, we can destroy the left and create this right-wing libertarian paradise. And wouldn't that be lovely? I think it would. There'd be unicorns, there'd be, um, what, else would, what else would there be? Um, porno lesbians. Porno lesbians, the right kind of porno lesbians. I mean, you know, not the sort of, not, not prisoner cell block H, but actually, yeah, proper ones. Um, what else? Just yeah, really good box, lurchers don't bite you. Really good, really good series on Netflix. Just like better than Fowder, even better than Babylon Berlin. Um, fine teas. Fine teas. Fine teas. Gin. Artisanal gins. Um, you would be able to ride to hounds without injuring yourself and getting banned by your family from doing so. It sounds like it's going to be great. Utopia. It's going to be great. So help me build, help me build utopia. You'll find the details at my website, dellingpoleworld.com. Okay, now, oh, one more thing. I know a lot of you have been asking for the yes, no game. And I've got some sort of slightly sad news, which is to say that we haven't got the budget for a full yes, no game in this episode. But obviously, when we, the funds start rolling in, we will be able to have a, a mega luxurious, um, you know, deluxe, deluxe, uh, yes, no game. Until then, we've got. Oh, sorry, it's a bit. It's a bit cut price, I gather. Well, the the, the yes, no game I've got here. Yeah. It, it's a, a yes, no Brexit special. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. And so, you've got to uh, guess what the what the common thread is. But okay. I don't think it should be too difficult. Okay. So we've got. Um, let's go for a random selection here. Uh, Stuart Andrew, MP for Pudsey. Apparently it's a bear, I think, isn't it? It is a bear. It is, in fact, a bear. With a really annoying bear. Annoying bear? I'm guessing no. Right. Um, we've got Guto Beb, MP for Aberconwy. Aber Conwy. Yep. Sounds no. like it's possibly in Wales. No. Nope. No. Um, Nick Bowles, MP. <laughs> Double plus? No, no. I, mean, I don't want to make the no um, into, a, into, a, into a positive, but the world's second worst Wickhamist after uh, Seamus Milne. Michael Ellis, MP for Northampton North. Nope. Um, Tobias Elwood, MP nope. for... Bo Vicky Ford. Nope. Kevin Foster. Nope. Lucy Fraser. Nope. George Freeman. Nope. Uh, no, definitely so not. What, what do we think... I think do you know what, what do I we think, think these people have I, in common? I think I've worked it out. I think the reason they're all no's, I, you could have gone on, it would have been very depressing. Okay, I'm seeing. afraid it's a very long list. These are the people that the Conservative MPs who sorry, conservative sorry, sorry Conservative MPs and MPs <laughs> in yeah. in the universe we're going to create they won't be no. MPs which is why they're MPs. Mm -hmm. um, they all voted to keep the worst Prime Minister in history mm. in power. They had their chance to defenestrate her, and instead they said no, we carry on doing the the work you're doing, bold, bold, brave Theresa. And shall I give you an opportunity to give you a yes for the yes, no game? Oh, yeah, I think, give me for, a... For Prime Minister of Great Britain, mm. who would be better than Theresa May, Daisy the... Um, Daisy the Spaniel. Daisy the Spaniel. Yes. There you go. Or uh, you did, Lemmy even the Lurch. Lemmy the Lurch would be a better Prime Minister than with, Theresa May. With all his biting and With all his biting and growling. With all, I think I'd grow rather fond of his biting if he were Prime Minister. <laughs> because I would be... I, every time he bit me, I would think, I don't care because he's not Theresa effing May. And he sh he's actually showing a bit of backbone. Bit of backbone, yep. yeah. Which is sadly lacking in the yep. current yep. incumbent. So do you, think that's, do you think that's the point where we can end the podcast? Because uh, well, our wives you know are going to be... We were talking about curries earlier on. Oh, curries. I'm absolutely gagging for you, curry. You have a curry, yeah. And yeah. Uh, I, I've missed... I was supposed to be cooking a cauliflower cheese, which actually once sounded quite appealing, but now I could really do with a curry. So if we wrap that up, I'm going to go... So you were listening to the Not James Dellingpole podcast with not me, James Dellingpole, and my... Definitely my, me, my Dick Dellingpole, guest. because they haven't had to take anything away from me. Guest, my guest, Dick Dellingpole. And here's another thought. This time next year, we are going to be doing the same podcast, but so much better. We're going to have a better no, yes, no game. I'm going to get, bigger I'm going to get a bigger Christmas tree. I'm going to get a, at the very least, a, an over and under shotgun from Beretta. Mm -hmm. Going to get bags of weed, that are really good weed that, mm -hmm. that the listeners, special friends have sent in. 
Um, <laughs> what else? You're probably going to get bits of Napoleon. I'm going to replace um, Lemmy with a Borzoi. I, oh, I yeah. really love a Borzoi. They're the, the hunting dogs in War and Peace. Oh, it's yeah. huge. Yeah, yeah. The, the, wolf, the yeah. wolf hunt. Russian wolfhound. Yeah. I think we get, we could, we'd get a, All of these. a pack of Borzois. <sighs> Why not? Well, Why not? Yeah. Probably get... Um, and also, of course, it won't be filmed here anyway. It will be filmed on some, some amazing island or island. in an ice hotel in Greenland with, with, yeah. the, with the actual Father Christmas. Or is it in Greenland, wherever it is? That, that sort of place. The world is going to be our lobster. All it needs is you, the special friend, to donate to whatever account. When I get my technical shit together, we're, we're going to make it happen. So happy Christmas, everyone. We love you. Sorry, happy Christmas, special friend. You are the only one. We love you very much. Thank you very much. And happy new year. Bye-bye.